You're watching Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomeranz. Thank you for joining us. Our guest is David Oglesby. David is a professor at the University of California in Riverside, and he is a specialist and expert in earthquakes. I am so glad you're here. I've grown up in California. I can remember the earthquake of 1971, mm -hmm. the one of 2004, last year in Chino Hills, 2008. Mm -hmm. And what I want to talk about today is preparing, because we think we're prepared, but in a lot of ways we're not. Well, preparation is key because earthquakes in Southern California and all over California are inevitable. We cannot prevent them. So what we can do is prepare ourselves for them in the future. Okay, let's talk about an average family. Mm -hmm. What can they do to prepare? Well, an average family can do things like, for example, securing furniture to the walls. The biggest danger in an earthquake in Southern California is not so much the collapse of your house. I mean, every once in a while something like that happens, but it's pretty rare. The biggest danger is stuff falling on you in your house. So you want to try to prevent that as much as possible. So bolting uh, bookshelves, wardrobes, big heavy furniture to the wall, securing big heavy paintings to the wall with uh, w more earthquake safety, uh, safe um, right. hanging de uh, devices. If an earthquake hits, I got to be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to do. Do I go into a doorway and stand between the doorway? Do I go under a bed? What do I do? The best thing to do is to drop, cover, and hold on. Really? Those, those three things, drop, cover, and hold on. If an earthquake happens right now in this studio, right. I'm going to go directly underneath this table. Okay. I'm going to I'm gonna curl up, and I'm going to hold on to this table leg so that if the shaking gets really bad, the table doesn't get away from me. That's your best bet. Get underneath something. Don't try to go to a doorway because, because while you're trying to get to a doorway, you're not protected from falling material. Plus, you're typically sharing the door away with a door and it might slap you around. But what if something falls on this table? Well, the table will at least slow it down. Okay. You know, there's, because there's really, you're still better under the table than you would be any place else. Really? You know, it's not a guarantee of safety, of course, but you're still better off getting underneath something sturdy. Now, what if you live near a beach? Because many of our viewers do. They live in coastal communities. If an earthquake hits, mm -hmm. what should they do? The general rule is that if, the, if, if your estimate of the ground shaking is that it lasts more than about 20 seconds or so, then you should head for high ground as quickly as possible, but safely after the earthquake is over. Try to get at least 100 feet above the beach. Now, in a lot of our coastal communities, we have cliffs and, th and things like that, so that makes it a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, try to proceed uh, as rapidly as, po as possible. We don't generate, uh, we're worried about tsunamis, of course. Yes. We typically don't generate huge tsunamis here, but we could Why? generate a local tsunami. Well, the faults that, uh, that would produce uh, the tsunamis are the ones that are offshore, under, underwater. And those faults are not gigantic. They're not, we cannot produce a tsunami as bad as, for example, the Indian Ocean Suma, uh, Sumatra tsunami that happened uh, a few years back. We couldn't produce a tsunami that big here. But we could produce a tsunami of some significant size that could threaten some uh, local communities. I was speaking with someone recently. He's a Chinese se uh, seismologist. And he described for me a situation where with the Chinese earthquake in 2008, I believe, um, there were huge and massive landslides to the mm -hmm. point that there were some communities that were literally buried. Mm -hmm. Everyone in that community was buried alive. Is that something that could happen in Southern California? Well, we do certainly have some communities that have experienced landslides in, in the past. And as we build more and more into our hills, you know, into, the, into the urban wildland interface, we run the risk of, of landslides. I don't, um, I don't know of any communities that are at risk of earthquake-caused landslides to that great degree, mm -hmm. but there certainly are communities that where it is a risk. What do you think about the earthquake kits that we see at the local big box stores? Oh, the earthquake kits that you yes. see there? Well, they're certainly, they? they're certainly better than nothing. I mean, you can construct your own earthquake kit for probably a lot cheaper, but mm -hmm. if it's easier to go in and buy one at a big box store, why not? In our final moments, what should be in our earthquake kit then? You should have uh, food, you should have flash, a flashlight with batteries, um, any kind of medicine uh, that, that you might need, I mean, basically, you, uh, w and water especially. You want to be able to survive for at least three days without help. Okay, if you had to predict, where's the next earthquake in Southern California? I could not predict. <laughs> Why not? Come on, you're supposed to be able to do that. Um, that's the one thing that seismologists I cannot do. I'm sorry. I teach, I teach. Thank you, David, so much for joining us. We really you're very appreciate welcome. it. It's a pleasure. For Local Edition, I'm Brad Pomerantz. Back to CNN HLN.